Hi, welcome to another edition of Ordinary Differential Equations. Today we are going to talk about direction field. So, direction field is a qualitative approach to solving a differential equation. So in general, we try to solve a differential equation that's given to us as y prime is equal to some function of x and y. The question is how do we solve this? So for example, I can have a differential equation like say y prime is equal to minus x plus y. For this we talked about the method of solution, the integrating factor method. We can go ahead and solve it. It wasn't all that straightforward but it was doable. However, if we go to a differential equation that is substantially more complicated, say cosine of x plus y squared. Well, looking at that, we wouldn't have a solution method, either sub method of separation or integrating factor method that we could apply and get an idea about the uh, structure of the solution. So we have to look for plan B. And plan B is essentially direction field. Direction field says uh, we can look at uh, the trajectory or the solutions and get uh, an idea or at least an approximate idea about the, how, what the solution looks like if you are willing to give up the notion of having a clean cut formula for the answer. So what is the idea of direction field? I'll explain shortly. We go and take a look at some pictures and we come back and explain this thing more. So the idea is the following. If you have y as a function of x, then its graph will be some curve here. The slope of that curve is what is given on the right hand side. So y prime which is same as dy dx. You remember from calculus that is the slope of the tangent line. To the graph of y as a function of x. That's what you usually in algebra classes you refer to uh, as the m, the slope. So what the differential equation tells you is that at any given point we know what the slope is. The question is, can you find out what the curve is? So it's kind of a reverse type of a problem. We give you the slope and we expect you to find the, the curve itself. Now, before we go into the details of this thing, let me show you some pictures that uh, brings up the idea. The idea of a field is a very general idea. It shows up in different areas, perhaps with slightly different meaning and connotation, but the ideas are very similar to each other. Let's go to the website for the course. So under items that are listed here are some demos. Here I have examples of fields. First of this thing is the velocity field in the Hurricane Sandy. So here you see a picture of the uh, hurricane which uh, hit New York area in 2012. You see uh, many arrows drawn. The arrows far away are small. At the center of the hurricane, the arrows become much bigger, indicating that uh, the air velocity is much higher. So each of these arrows indicates the velocity of air at that location. Of course, the picture is packed with many other pieces of information. Let's take a look at another picture. You definitely have uh, uh, played with the magnets as a kid. If you put a bunch of compasses around, the compasses show you the direction of the magnetic field at that location. If you string them along in a particular fashion, you see the magnetic lines. This is perhaps something that's more familiar to you. Uh, putting iron shaving on a piece of paper and putting a magnet around it and seeing the direction fields, the magnetic fields. Similar idea applies to the electric field. If you have electric charges, 
then you have electric fields <coughs> which is essentially a force that a unique ele electric charge is going to feel at any particular location another example is a gravitational field for example here we have the earth and the moon and uh, near the moon of course the gravitation pointing toward the moon near earth it points toward earth and at any point in space we can put a unit weight uh, unit mass and figure out what the uh, gravitational force on that would be that arrow is the um, gravitational field and so on so <coughs> this is perhaps uh, a image of Saturn's uh, polar hexagonal vortex is the perhaps more fascinating example of this thing uh, some peculiar hexagonal structure shows up on North Pole of Saturn and uh, you can think about it as a direction field as well now <coughs> The direction field that we have in mind is uh, uh, simpler than most of these examples. In most uh, physical application, uh, the, the field is a vector that has a magnitude and a direction. For us, we are just emphasizing the direction alone, so our picture is going to be somewhat simpler. Now, let's go ahead and uh, practice uh, an example. Suppose I uh, start with uh, an example that I know the exact solution to and I want to practice that so here is a differential equation y prime is equal to minus x plus y I can consider any x y point on the page and then draw the direction at that point to make it specific we put a grid on our page so that we have some specific location to look at so I rather arbitrarily pick a set of grid points I can go up or down or left or right for example let's look at this point point with the coordinate uh, x0 and y2 so this is my x and y it's x and a y if I put these values here I get minus 0 plus 2 is 2 and that tells me the slope is 2 so at that at this point I draw a little line segment whose slope is 2 so I keep him uh, short so that they don't crisscross each other and make the picture overly complicated let's go look at this point this is a point with a coordinate 1 and 2 if I put those numbers here I get a, a total value of 1 telling me that the slope is 1 so I'm gonna be drawing uh, a, a little line segment with slope of 1 what about at uh, point 2 2 at uh, 2 2 uh, this value is going to become 0 and I have a 0 for slope indicating that my little line segment is going to be horizontal same thing is going to happen at 1 1 or 0 0 at all of these points I have a 0 slope if I come to this point x is 2 y is 1 in that case the slope is going to be minus 1 that means I will be pointing downward like this typically uh, an arrow is drawn uh, instead of a line segment uh, simply indicating that we go from left to right it's not a connotation of a speed or some a velocity rather uh, just indicating that we are going from left to right here if I am at point uh, 3 1 I'll be going down with uh, slope 2 if I am on the x axis uh, y is 0 so uh, at this point the slope is going to be minus 1 at this point the slope is going to be minus 2 minus 3 and so on so it's a rather tedious task of drawing lots of line segments for simple problems we are expected to be able to do this thing by hand and uh, figure out what is the flow field or the direction uh, is going to look like for more complicated problems we are going to employ uh, some software 
again I'm going to direct you to my website here uh, there are several software that you can use for drawing these little line seg segments for you the best of these things is the direction field plotter by Dr. Paul King in Rice University this is a Java based uh, program uh, so you need to install that one first and then you can use this thing I have a little bit of statement about uh, issues with respect to Java installation so in case you want to avoid that then we have uh, several other web-based application that you can use to do the same thing however the best of them is uh, still this one so let me uh, once you go to this uh, website D field is the software you want to install to your computer if you care to do that and then once you install and open it you are going to see a, a page perhaps looking like this so in this case you see a differential equation being written like in the following fashion x prime is equal to now here's the right hand side written in terms of x and t this one expects you to specify what is the independent variable of the right hand side so in this case this is saying my independent variable is t uh, there could be some parameters in your problem you specify the parameters there's going to be the window that you want to look at so you specify start and end of the window that you want to look at let's suppose we want to take a look at the differential equation we just wrote and that was the dependent uh, variable was y notice that this became red because uh, now we have too many variables we have x and a t so that's not correct we have to make sure uh, our equation is uh, written correctly so you remember the differential equation that we had here was minus x plus y so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that so here I have minus x plus y why is it that it is red can you figure out what is it that the software is complaining about of course yes the independent variable is x in my problem so we have to be careful about that right now I don't have any use for these parameters so I can leave it alone uh, this is some uh, predefined window size I go ahead and take a look at that if I want to focus somewhere else then I come back and change uh, the beginning and end of the window so we click this button so what we are, we were doing by drawing those arrows one by one is going to happen in a, uh, in a flash I have about 200 of these arrows and uh, by looking at them I can tell what the uh, flow direction will be so uh, here we see that we are pulling up all these arrows are pointing upward uh, somewhere here we see that a turnover is happening it looks like I'm going over a hump and then I come down and then I keep descending downward uh, <clears throat> to verify our guess uh, the software provides us with a simple uh, tool if you go anywhere and click at that point the software is going to draw the trajectory meaning the solution that uses that as an initial condition so for example suppose I pick this point where the coordinate X is minus 1 and the Y is equal to 1 if I go ahead and click here uh, the software first goes forward and then comes back at this point and then goes backward and it tells you that if you draw this curve this curve is going to be always tangent to those direction fields you had. So you can go ahead and uh, play a scenario. What if I start here? Well, if you start here, that's what's going to happen. If you start here, that's what's going to happen. As you move to the right, you see something, uh, all of a sudden something happens. The curve, instead of pulling all the way up, turns around and comes down. And uh, this thing happens over and over again so there is a particular value that separates two groups of solution the group that pulls itself up to plus infinity and another group that goes down toward minus infinity
you're going to have several homework problems where you'll be asked to uh, distinguish between these two groups specify this one this group and specify this other group we'll talk about that later on so we see that the software helps quite a bit now uh, clicking someplace on uh, on a page is always an approximate task. Our, our hands could be shaking. We perhaps our eyes don't see very well. The solution to that is to go click on the windows and then keyboard input. And here you have an option of choosing what X and what Y you want. So for example, I can have X uh, say I want to be in, uh, in this neighborhood. Say X is 5 and y is one and a half so x is five y is 1.5 and then I say solve you see it drew this one it puts a little circle here indicating that is where the initial condition is five and one half and that's what the curve looks like so the software can be used for doing experimentation getting an idea about what the solution looks like but of course you notice we don't have any formula that's what we lose by this approach. We have a qualitative description and an approximate solution, but we don't get a formula to go along with it. Okay, so let's go back to uh, our hand-drawn picture. So here we were approximating uh, that uh, direction field by drawing these uh, arrows. Of course, just uh, I have here, what, uh, 12 arrows, hard to see. Uh, much from it but, but the software does much better job in some cases we'll be able to actually do uh, everything by hand we don't need that software and those cases are when the right hand side is a simpler equation than this if I have just uh, Y on the right hand side I'll have a lot easier uh, time of graphing everything and guessing uh, what will happen to uh, our uh, equation. So let's go ahead start by a simpler example. So I'll uh, so y prime is equal to say 2 minus y. So I don't have an X, so my computation is going to be easier, substantially easier. Uh, and we will see shortly why. Let's go ahead and draw our uh, axis. Uh, we are assuming that the independent variable is X, but you could have used any other letter so long as you stay consistent. So here's an X and a Y. So it doesn't matter what X I pick that does not influence the right hand side only the value of y is significant so let's pick on three values say one two and three at y equal to one and any of these x values let's choose x equal to one at y equal to one the slope is one so that's how i'll be moving at y equal to two the slope is going to be zero zero means being horizontal at y equal to 3, slope is minus 1. I put 3 here, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. And I see this kind of movement. So let's put an arrow on all of these things, indicating we are going from left to right. So what does this picture mean? If I start at this location, I'll be going up. If I start at this location, I'll stay horizontal. If I start at this location, I'll be coming down. Start at this point let's see what happens suppose I go move forward suppose I go to this point well at that point slope is still zero so I'm still horizontal suppose I go move forward and repeat the game so I'm stuck on that straight line that straight line has a name it's called the equilibrium solution equilibrium simply indicates uh, things are not changing so what is it that's not changing it's the y value that's not changing of course x whatever is represented that is changing but y is fixed this is called equilibrium solution what is the characteristic of equilibrium 
is, if things are not changing, it means their derivative is zero. So it's specified with y prime equal to zero. In this case, y prime equal to zero tells us that y has to be equal to two. Now, if I start below and then move up, as I come close to y equal to two, this value is gonna become smaller so my slope is going to become less. So for example, if I uh, have come to the to this point where my y is one and a half, then two minus one and a half is going to be 0 0.5, meaning uh, my slope is less. If I come even closer to this line, my slope is going to become even smaller than before. So as I come close to the equilibrium solution, my uh, slope becomes less and less. One way to kind of uh, remember this thing is to think about an airplane that's coming toward the cruising altitude. Never reaching it, but coming closer and closer to it. So the trajectory that we see here has uh, the following look. If we connect these uh, arrows to each other, we see that kind of a behavior. Well, what if I had started from uh, a point above? At this point, I come, uh, let's say, original value was y equal to three. My slope is negative, so I come down. Now, if I come to two and a half, my slope still negative, but smaller magnitude than before. Smaller magnitude means my uh, approach is gonna be more flat than before. The closer I come to the equilibrium solution, the smaller my uh, slope will be in, absol in absolute value. So I become more and more flat. If I connect all of these points with each other, I'll see a solution that looks like this. So that is uh, resembling an airplane that's coming toward the landing strip, but never having a touchdown it just keeps going forever and getting closer and closer but uh, not having the touchdown itself this uh, kind of a picture uh, reminds us of uh, some kind of a funnel or uh, a magnet that's drawing all the lines into itself so if I would started at some point down here another point with the same logic as before the trajectory is going to approach the same equilibrium solution. If I had started at uh, some point up here, the same thing is going to happen again, and I'll be coming down towards the solution. This type of a behavior uh, is referred to as stable equilibrium. Stable means if I move away from that equilibrium, then I'm going to come back toward that equilibrium. So this is called stable equilibrium solution. Of course, you can go ahead and duplicate this thing on the software we were just looking at, but uh, we can do this thing by hand. Let's go look at another one. Suppose I have y prime is equal to y minus 2. Let's go ahead and quickly graph this. So, uh, as is the tradition in this course, uh, what is expected is that uh, you pause this video, of, uh, draw the direction field yourself, and come back and check that your solution is actually correct. So uh, here is our signal that you're going to go and do this and then come back, okay? So we are going to be a little bit faster here. So we say set the right-hand side equal to zero. So I'm getting y equal to 2 again. So I go ahead and draw that uh, line. Now, if y is a value such as 1, then 1 minus 2 will be minus 1. It means at this point, I am pointing downward. If y was 0, for example, if I go here and draw the direction field at this point, uh, the slope is minus 2. 
so it looks like I'm falling further and further away from the equilibrium solution what if I had started at the point above the equilibrium solution which is y equal to 3 and y equal to 3 y prime becomes 1 it means I am going at a slope of 1 so we quickly realize that above the equilibrium solution I'm going further away and below the equilibrium solution I'm falling further away so if I were to uh, guess what the behavior would be is that here I am pulling away and here I'm pulling away again if I tried uh, some other sets of point I will get the same picture translated to that location but the behavior is the same that I'm running away and here I'm running away from the equilibrium solution so in all of these things we are going from left to right in the direction of the positive value of x and as a result we are going to call this solution as unstable equilibrium solution Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, draw uh, or at least open up another question a little bit more sophisticated than these uh, a problem that we are going to look at it again in uh, upcoming lectures so suppose I have y prime is equal to y times let's say 2 minus y okay so uh, what's the difference between this and the previous one say we want to find the equilibrium solution equilibrium solution we set this thing equal to zero and of course we have two solutions y equal to zero and y is equal to two so this problem has two equilibrium solutions so we go get ready for analysis of what these equilibrium solutions are going to uh, make the solution behave so here is say my x-axis and then say 1 and uh, 2 y equal to 2 is this one so y is equal to 2 and y is equal to 0 So my plane is divided into three regions. Maybe you want to call this thing region one, region two, region three. Now we start uh, from a point in one of these regions and try to guess what happens to our solution. Suppose I start at this location. So that looks like one, two, three, four. Well, I put a four in this. I get a negative number, which means I'm descending. So I'll be coming down at quite a high slope. I just draw something indicating I'm coming down. So I'm going to come closer and closer, suppose, to 2. Suppose y is a number very close to 2, but above 2, like 2.1 or 2.01. What happens? This factor becomes almost 0. So the right-hand side becomes almost 0. But if my y was slightly higher than 2 this will be negative negative and close to 0 times some number so when I am above this line my slope is still negative but it's a very small number so small number means my slope uh, indicating I'm almost flat the closer to this line I come the flatter I'll be so the indication is that when I'm in region 1, as I come lower and lower, I'll be flattening out and that's how I'll move. What if I'm on region 2? If I'm on region 2, say, let's pick a number like 1. When I plug it here, I see that my slope is positive, meaning in region 2, I'm always pointing up. So if I was at this location, y is 1, I put it here and I see that my slope is 1. 
the fact that it's positive means I'm going up. Now, if I go up, what do I do? Do I cross this line? No, because when I come close to this line, that slope becomes closer and closer to zero. When it becomes close to closer to zero, it means I'm flattening out here. If I was close to this equilibrium solution, slightly above it, the slope still positive but very small. So here's an indication of what that will look like. What if I was in region 3? If I'm region 3, for example, y is minus 1. If it's minus 1 times 3, it becomes minus 3, meaning I am falling pretty fast. It's here indicating we are going down. So can you guess what the trajectories look like? So once again, you want to pause for a second and try to draw the trajectories by yourself. Okay, let's take a minute. Guess uh, for any starting point that's either in region 1 or 2 or 3, what happens to our trajectory? Which way would they go? So here is a reasonable guess. If you are up here, you're coming down and then you're flattening out like this. If you start anywhere in region 2, you're going to at the beginning you start very flat then you pull up and then become flat again near equilibrium solution y equal to 2. If you are in region 3 then you'll be falling faster and faster and just fall away. Now if you had started at any other location I get just a translation of these curve in that location. So for example if I start here my solution looks something like this. If I start here, my solution is going to look something like this going forward and similar to that if you want to go backward. If I start somewhere in region 3, same thing is going to happen. So again, in problems where the right hand side is just a function of why it is expected in most cases that you'll be able to analyze this problem completely by yourself without using the software. But in case you want to confirm what you have, you just go to uh, any of these software and let's try it again. So our equation was on the right hand side y times 2 minus y. Is that right? That was the right hand side. Uh, call your independent variable anything you want other than y and then ask it to graph the the phase plane. So you see these arrows pointing up and then flattening down here. The arrows up here are coming down and arrows below the zero are going down. To confirm your guess just click anywhere. So this is the in the middle. Uh, start close to zero equilibrium solution and converges to two. If you start up here it just quickly comes down down here uh, it quickly descends. So what we have here is a combination of these two behaviors. So we have both kind of equilibrium solution. This one is going to be called stable and this one is going to be called unstable. There's a third variety it's called semi-stable. It borrows half of shape from one of these and the other half from the other one. Uh, perhaps we postpone that uh, to the next uh, lecture. Also in the next lecture we are going to talk about the quick way of uh, figuring out who's stable, who's unstable. Again let's go back to see what happened here. The real incentive that makes us to go after this method is that most differential equations cannot be solved by any of the methods we are going to discuss in this class. And in fact, if you go ask a mathematician what's the solution of this, he wouldn't be able to give you a ready-made answer either. Because, uh, well, we have very limited number of functions and it would be unreasonable to expect us that everything can be solved based on that uh, limited set of tools that we have. So if we have a differential equation that is uh, 
very unfamiliar and does not fit in any of the molds that we have a, a very effective way of approaching it is to use one of these software to look at the solution to see what is it that we are dealing with and then if you want to inspect it uh, further perhaps try to find some theoretical description of what the solution is this starting uh, investigation can be very helpful so for uh, final practice today suppose we want to draw the direction field for this one let's see what does our software going to do for us so I had something like cosine of x plus y squared if I wanted to investigate this thing by hand it could have easily taken me a month or something uh, to, to work on it but here uh, you see um, the complication you see the arrows going up and down because of that uh, trick function and uh, you notice the behavior of this it would be hard to come up with some sort of a formula that's going to tell us this type of a behavior all that easily <sighs> okay so you go ahead and practice the assigned problems for this section and then we are going to meet again and talk about this uh, direction field uh, again. Until then, good luck and God bless.